Melanie Hallstein. I go to Normandale and we're on the campus right now. And so my friend Becca asked me today to tell her who inspires me the most. And I actually had a really tough time with it because I was really torn between um, who is the inspiring people who do great things and who are the people who do great things to me. So who do I know who's gone out of their way and been really selfless and done something really awesome for me personally? Or who have I seen do that something awesome for somebody else? So I have to say, well, my mom probably is an obvious one. She battled breast cancer for 10 years, nine years, and she never showed her pain ever. She's the strongest Christian woman I knew, and everybody would come up to me at during school, they'd come up to me, all my friends would come up to me and be like, Molly, I love your mom. I just talked to her. She's so awesome. And I guess she's going to be always going to be that person that I want to be and I want to look up to, but I'll never be able to be as great as she was. But I'm sure if she heard me saying that, she'd be upset. She's so selfless. But um, I think my mom was the strong Christian role model in my life and the person that I look up to most, for sure. And she impacted me by teaching me everything that I know today, everything. I, she died during that little preteen period where I didn't know who I was, or I still don't, but you know, <laughs> where you're working things out. And so that was right the cutoff point where I had to kick in my independence and just, so I had to be my own role model in a way and I took the things off of her that I learned. And then the other person that I'd have to say, sticking in the family, because you know, was an inspirational bunch, but um, my oldest sister Katie, and she has she's a farm, and she's traveled to Bolivia, and she's a foreign exchange student, and she had a boa constrictor, and she had an iguana, and she had just a lot of random stuff. But she she used to live in the city, and she's just she went through so much. Like she's been she's been through a lot, and she's always kept her head level. She's parties a lot, like clean parties like on the farm you know and she does everything herself she makes everything homemade and so I guess the way that she lives her life is just really awesome but um, for sure say something. someone's jamming you <laughs> for sure I'd have to say my mom oh and then there was that one guy when we were at that restaurant who paid for our meal he's a sweet little guy he was a cool guy so sweet we got these huge pancakes for like two dollars. And he prayed right before our, for his meal. Remember? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and he was sitting there watching us talk <laughs> about our awesome pancakes. They're yeah, so good. They were yellow. Everyone gets some good pancakes in Minneapolis. Yes. What else? Oh, let's. Can I talk about Jesus? Because I feel like Jesus is the most. Oh uh, yeah, we can talk about Jesus. I know that Jesus is like dead. <laughs> Or, <laughs> you like Sorry, died a while ago? That wasn't funny. But his presence is still with us today all the time. And everyone's aware of that, but no one thinks about it as much as we should. If you think about Jesus as a human being walking around the school around you and seeing how you act with your friends, that impacts me a lot. That changes the way that I talk. That changes what I, what I wear. That changes how I act. And I work at Target, I'm a cashier, so every single person that I meet, I meet 200 new people every day, more than that. And it's, 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 I always want to put my best face forward, but it's hard because we'll get into our self, selfish mindset, like I'm having a bad day, I'm crabby today, I don't want to be nice to everyone, but if you were to think about Jesus as one of your customers, and you shoving him off with just a thank you, have a good day, and no smile. Not that a smile impacts a lot, but sometimes it does. I mean, yes, it does. It's just like that. Okay, you're smiling. <laughs> and we need all three people, hopefully. Yeah? Thanks, Molly. An inspiring person to me lately uh, was a man named Captain Charles Moore. He's a speedboating captain. Uh, but recently, <laughs> he's made a lot of discoveries and he started a foundation. Um, to research pollution in the ocean um, and he's really made a big stand uh, being like the first person to really talk about some of the big problems that way. Mm -hmm. I think it was cool. He stepped outside of his boundaries. Sweet. That's Thanks. inspiring. When was that?
person that influences me the most, um, especially around school, would be uh, Lazar Rotak. He has uh, newly been hired as the new ceramics teacher here at Normandale. Um, if you haven't checked out his class, you really should. It's it's pretty darn cool. We're all in it, so. Uh, and we're all in it, Except yes. for me. Yeah. Round two. I should be in it, I guess. Um, you should be in it if you're not. Uh, you will love the class. It is not an easy A. You definitely have to work at it, but he loves all of his students so much. Um, I think he, he's a little too much of your friend sometimes. <laughs> he, he needs to work on being more of a professor, but you know, he's only 30, so that'll, that'll come in time. But yeah, he's definitely an influence on my art career and choosing to be in art, for sure. Um, yeah, and I want to continue to follow in his footsteps and create my own. There we go. Thank you. Who has insp inspired you the most? The person who has inspired me the most would be my cousin, Larissa. Uh, she inspired me and influenced me a lot because she's always there for me and um, in like every situation we just have so many great memories together and I hope that our relationship will continue to grow in Christ. And, yeah. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Important to you. Uh, mommy, daddy, and you. Who in your life who you've met has impacted you the most? Okay, I have two people that have impacted me the most. My mom and a family friend by the name of Nick. Um, Nick was a huge part of who I am today. And uh, he was this guy that came into our family um, that we kind of adopted, I guess, so to speak. And he was always capable of walking into a room and making a quiet room full of laughter and I have never had a moment where I felt I wasn't just filled with joy with him. Um, he was my brother's friend. He was a one of our family friends fiance and he was just this jolly guy. I mean like seriously I could tell you that he just looks like Santa Claus but like 30 years younger. That's how I describe Nick. <laughs> Because <laughs> um, his laughter even sounded like Santa Claus, like on Christmas, you know? I don't even know what Santa Claus's laughter sounds like, but if it was, it'd be like this jolly, like where your stomach actually like moves with your belt, like with your <laughs> laughter, you know? That's what I describe Nick. And then, you know, like we'd have these moments where I would like tell a lame joke or I would say something really sarcastically and only him would actually understand in the room. And like, so both of us would make eye contact and we would just start busting out laughing. <laughs> and you know, like everyone else around us, I mean, we could be at like a dinner table and like everyone else around us would be like, what the heck is going on? Okay, so I'll tell you a story real quick. Um, there was a time where my brother was actually, um, actually on, on his, what is it called? He's in the Navy. So he was on his tour, I guess, that's what you call it. When he's six months, he goes out to sea. Um, and my brother asked Nick to make sure that I was taken care of because I was going through high school and all the drama that goes along with it, like, all the peer pressure and all that stuff. So he was like, Nick, you have to make sure she does what she needs to do, goes to school, get work, work, gets work done, beats up the guy that hurts her, and you know, all that stuff. All that big brother stuff that they're supposed to do. Well, so Nick and I were sitting at Chili's one day, and it was like him, his fiance, my mom, and me. And so Nick and I are at the end of the table, and he always sat by us, so we're then at the end of the table, and we're like taking pictures of all this food that we're eating, because we're supposed to be taking pictures of things for Philip, and you know to make him feel better, not being home and stuff, to make him feel better his homesickness. So we're like taking pictures of all these burgers and stuff. It was hilarious. <laughs> and that's like a perfect example. <laughs> and like my mom and his fiance are like over here talking, you know, deep conversations. And we're over here laughing our butts off because we're taking all these pictures. And we're like, hey, hey Philip won't be. <laughs> and like ketchup. I mean, stupid things like that. It was great. Um, so he's just a big part of my life. Uh, he is someone that I always think of when I meet people. You know, like he always made sure the best advice he gave me is make sure that you, when you meet everybody in your life, that 
you actually, you know, make it first, first impressions are all that matter. And, you know, like, make sure that you make it, not difference, but when you meet someone, don't let them feel uncomfortable, you know, have a conversation with them. Don't feel scared because there's someone you've never met before, you know, because you never know when you're ever going to meet them again. And, you know, the best advice you left me was that, you know, just so every time I meet someone, I always make sure that I get a piece of them with me. I give them a piece of me too, you know, it's something important. Um, my other person that has inspired me throughout my life, uh, hi, <laughs> uh, it's my mom. <laughs> it's inspired or influenced? Inspired. Okay. And um, my mom, of course, she raised two kids. I think I was totally awesome. Just, okay, sorry. Um, two kids by herself. Was he smiling? And, yeah, he was like, going like oh, this. So there's cute. a guy behind us, guys, that just walked across him was <laughs> cute. like smiling, was like, Whoa. Okay, impact of the day. <laughs> yes. Um, and so my mom was a big inspiration, and she also impacted me as well. I mean, this is cool. Um, but she raised two kids by herself, you know, single mom. To take care of two people by yourself is really hard, and I can't imagine doing it, and I don't really have my intentions. So I hope to be married. Um, but she did it through a lot of sweat and a lot of hard work <laughs> and a lot of yelling <laughs> no and she just she had like a she went in with you know she never ever ever blamed her children you know like she always said you know she had my brother really young and she always to this day tells me she's like it wasn't you know it wasn't his choice to be brought in the world you know it's mine i made the decision to bring him in you know i'm gonna make sure that he lives the life that i intended on him to live with me, you know, I was just, I was a very screamy baby, so I can't imagine, like, her going to, gro her going to grocery stores and stuff and me screaming all the time, like, it's crazy. But, those two people are really important to me, and they've gotten me through so much, like, my mom still gets me through everything, you know, even if I'm living in a different state, I'm s even if I claim I'm independent, I still need her, you know, and every time, I, my whole life I'm gonna need her. But she's, a uh, what incredible woman, you know, she, definitely is very selfless and puts herself out there and doesn't expect anything in return, which is something that I'm very proud to say is my mom. Um, so, those two people. Thanks, guys. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day. <laughs>